Although bronchiectasis is widely believed to be low in incidence, this has been termed orphan disease, a phrase coined by our colleagues in the West because the incidence there way ranges between 3.7 to 52 in per 100,000 adults. However, in developing country like India and Asia, it remains an important problem. Abnormal permanent dilatation of subsegmental bronchi, which is irreversible. That is the key, it's permanent. This is the foundation for considering surgery in bronchiectasis. The patient coughs, has hemoptysis, recurrent respiratory tract infections. He gets depressed, introverted, a social discard, social deprived, and finally, it is a social stigma. The very basis of surgery depends on the mantras to know your anatomy in total, be aware of the causes as that leads to the indications and a complete understanding of the pathophysiology. 10 segments on the right side, eight on the left. Pneumonectomy would, would entail at times 10 segments and the patient lives with eight segments. So eight segments is all that a patient requires to survive without being a respiratory cripple, say four on the one side and four on the other side or five on one side and three on the other side. Bronchi and bronchioles involved in a vicious circle of transmutable infection and inflammation with mediator release causes infl inflammation of the bronchial wall, impaired mucociliary clearance, chronic airway bacterial infection, and the cycle is complete with infection and inflammation and destruction of the bronchial walls. Etiology, if it is congenital or immunological, there is no role of resection. Lung transplantation is the end treatment. However, if the infection is acquired or it's tuberculosis or due to pneumonia, or there is bronchial obstruction with the tumor within the bronchial tree or foreign bodies, or extrinsic, there comes the role of surgery. Bronchiectasis morphologically is classified into cylindric. That is important because in cylindric bronchiectasis, there is perfusion. And here there is no role of surgery as opposed to cystic bronchiectasis and varicose bronchiectasis where there is no perfusion. This is of significance and these patients are the ones which benefit from surgery. And the term pseudobronchiectasis is mentioned in passing. It's a radiological fancy term wherein there's dilatation of the bronchi, but this is temporary. It subsides with antibiotics or with time. No surgery is required. HRCT is the basis for treatment, the keystone for the diagnosis of bron uh, bronchiectasis, bronchial dilatation, peribronchial inflammation. There is lack of tapering within one centimeter of the pleura, mucus filled areas. And this is a nice, beautifully depicted CT scan wherein the right side is normal, left side is diseased and it's confined to only the basal segmental areas of the lower lobe. And here the upper lobe, as well as the superior segment is normal. The entire basal segment is contracted and that is known as lobar retraction. Excellent result with surgery. Ventilation perfusion scan, if you have it, is a great tool and in your armamentarium where there is no perfusion, that is an area which is amenable to resection. Another procedure which deserves mention only for the reason for surgeons and physicians to be aware of 
is bronchial artery embolization therapy for hemoptysis. This is only a temporary procedure, a bridging procedure to a definitive treatment because collaterals can develop or the native vessel can recanalize. So the concept of surgical treatment is to remove permanently damaged areas of the lung where there is poor antibiotic penetration and this serves as a reservoir for microbiological infections. Surgical resection is aimed at minimizing the number of resected segments without compromising the objective of elimination of disease. It could be segmental, subsegmental, low bar, unilateral, or bilateral. Complete resection prevents recurrence. Preoperative preparation is of essence, especially they should go through intensive respiratory physiotherapy and appropriate antibiotics. The need of toilet bronchoscopy preoperatively after intubation cannot be stressed. This is a useful equation to predict postoperative pulmonary function. We have a pre-op PFT, and with this formula, we can calculate the vital capacity at FEV1, FEC above two liters, and FEV1 above one liter. Please do consider these patients for surgery. And during surgery, of course, standard procedures are conformed to, and additional attention is paid to prevent a BPF. It could be done with the coverage of the stump with pleura or intercostal muscle or any vascular pedicle. Continuing with the principles, one should remember this is an inflammatory disease and there could be severe pleural adhesions and that could also be in the form of adhesions in the mediastine where the dissection of the lobe lobar hilus becomes a challenge. Excessive bronchial dissection should be avoided and peribronchial tissues are preserved to avoid a bronchial BPF. If the dissection becomes difficult, one can consider intrapericardial vessel ligation. This is a short video on VATS middle lobectomy. This highlights that there are no or very few plural adhesions, makes it congenial for VATS, the three lobes, the upper lobe, middle lobe, and lower lobe. And during surgery, it is best to dissect the artery and its branches that of the pulmonary artery first to avoid flooding of the lung and then address the pulmonary vein and its branches. Here, the fissure has been divided, address the artery, and then it will be nice and you convenient and useful to divide the inferior pulmonary ligament, which allows more access and maneuverability. This is the pulmonary artery, and that's just to run you through briefly. Of course, we check for a bronchoproodal fistula at the end of the procedure by flooding the pleural cavity. And this is a resected middle lobe classical bronchial dilatation. post op care is addressed mainly to two areas. One is relief of pain, which then allows one to clear secretions. This can be addressed with epidural analgesia or systemic analgesics and of late paravertebral blocks have been found to be very effective. Of course, beware of deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism. Antibiotics have to be administered, at least for five days or for the duration of symptoms. The stress and need for chest physio physiotherapy cannot be overemphasized. Nasotracheal aspiration, therapeutic bronchoscopy clears the bronchial tree. Percussion is most useful, spirometry, definitely most beneficial. And of course, fluids have to be restricted according to the age and amount of lung resected. Preferable to have the patients ambulated on day one after surgery. With this information, armed with so much armamentarium, 
of how to look after postoperatively preoperative preoperative selection of patients. We can now deal with complex scenarios like unilateral scattered bronchiectasis, bronchiectasis with bronchitis in COPD, bronchiectasis with BPF, and bilateral bronchiectasis. Literature here is limited, and that is because of excessive zeal for complete reception of bronchiectasis has invited criticism of leaving a patient as a respiratory critical. This clearly shows there's bronchiectasis in the on the left side of the lingula and epico posterior segment, lower down, there was some scattered bronchiectasis in the superior segment. But the x ray pre op and after surgery, a world of difference, the media stem has shifted back, and the left side shows better aeration. Bronchiectasis can lead to lung abscess and then a BPF. And here, and you can see the knobby appearance, another finding on table to decide which is bronchiectatic, and here the BPF is confirmed. And this video here shows a worm-like structure that is pus in the bronchial tree. And that is seen when we extruded out and gave pressure and compressed the lung. Now, Again, as mentioned earlier, we do not have randomized trials because it's impractical. And all we have is information of the enthusiasm of surgeons uh, who have ventured into this area. It could be biased, it could be uh, lead to pulmonologist calling us to be overzealous and making patients into a respiratory cripple. Bilateral bronchiectasis as seen here, middle lobe, lingula, less than eight segments here, it can easily be resected. It can be done a bilateral thoracotomy or by WATS. But remember in bats, the patient should be able to tolerate one lung ventilation. And as mentioned earlier, parenchymal approval scarring makes it a huge challenge. Calcified lymph nodes, are, especially near the arteries and vessels, can be a nightmare. Your less threshold to convert should be low to a thoracotomy. We have had our share of bilateral bronchiectasis, and what we found interestingly was after we did surgery on one side, nearly 40% did not require a second surgery. On the other side, single sitting was done in initially, but of late we do staged resections and complications. I'd like to mention mainly something which we should be aware is of expansion failure, wherein it could be due to mucus secretions and therapeutic bronchoscopy health. And this three chamber suction units are most useful, especially if we can keep the suction at minus 20 centimeters of water. There are various products available in the market. And now we have this digital drainage system. Complete resection was found in 58%. Hemoptysis vanished. Happily, the Fletcher dyspnea score decreased. Post-operative FEV run values were higher. No difference in FVC values. Those with localized perfusion defects in VQ scans underwent complete resection and became symptom-free. So the statement would be up to 10 disease segments may be resected, thereby offering hope in bilateral bronchiectasis. Even up to three segments may be left behind, but beware of expansion failure. Happily enough, catch up growth was observed within a year. Do not take what you cannot give. So, in properly selected patients with unilateral scattered or bilateral bronchiectasis, resection can be performed with acceptable morbidity and mortality. Justice delayed is justice denied, and treatment delayed is treatment denied. We have to educate and update our pulmonology friends that early referrals can achieve optimum and best results, complete resection, complete cure. Together, we can convert socially deprived, socially discarded to be socially accepted.